Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE live from day one of our coverage of Dell Technologies World 2019. There's about 15,000 people here, about 4,000 of Dell Technologies partners, lots of folks. We're pleased to welcome to theCUBE a couple of guests. We've got Melanie Devigon, VP of Digital Workplace Portfolio from Atlas. Mel Melanie, it's great to have you on theCUBE. Thank you for having me. And we have Justin Grimsley, Product Marketing from VMware. Justin, thank you for joining Stu and me as well. Yep, good to be here. So workplace, one of the big themes from this morning's keynote, one of the themes that we've actually heard all day is, we talk about digital transformation, we talk about it at every event, it's essential, but people are essential for digital transformation. And we have this workforce that has changed so much in the last few years. Some of the stats that were shown this morning, I think I remember seeing 81% of people now work outside of a traditional office, and about half the people, and I'm one of them, and I know Stu is too, work in at least three different places in a single week. So in order to enable digital transformation to be real, it's got to start with the people. Mm -hmm. So Melanie, talk to us about um, transformation of the modern workplace and what Atos is doing to facilitate that. Yeah, I think we've We've seen a big change in the market lately where, you know, in the past, um, successful organizations were really focusing on employee productivity, but, but lately, uh, all of them realize the importance of employee engagement and employee experience. And I mean, um, this morning, Pat mentioned this, uh, the fact that highly engaged employee were going to drive success of, of the company. What is very uh, striking is that if you compare that to the fact Gallup released a study last year, saying that 87% of employees are not engaged. So you can see uh, the, the huge gap and how by focusing on this employee engagement, by transforming the employee experience, you are actually going to contribute to the business. Uh, and uh, I think um, really when we talk about employee experience, we need to look at it uh, from an holistic point of view. So at Etos, we used to talk about people, places, and platform. People, it's all about, uh, about the company culture, how people are engaged, uh, what type of leadership in the company. It is about uh, digital inclusion and, and uh, accessibility. Places, of course, it's about from where, from where you work. Uh, you mentioned the, the stat about, uh, about mobility and from where people work. It's also about the building itself and how the building is going to foster collaboration. And of course, the platform, it is about the IT the technology that is going to enable all of that. What are the tools that you give to the end user, to the employee to be able to perform his job? So it starts with a device. It is about the collaboration solution that are going to, uh, to, to yeah, foster and help changing the mindset, changing the way people work. All right. So Justin, how does VMware tie into the picture that Melanie was painting there? Absolutely, I, I think this is why Atos, VMware, and Dell are such good partners, right? Our, our visions are so well aligned to that employee experience that you guys were talking about. And for us, it's you know the, the three major trends that we see are that users are no longer you know tied to the company network, right? They're not tethered to their cubicle with that Cat5 cable, right? They're you know working shoulder to shoulder with you know their customers or in the coffee shop or at home. Uh, they're accessing all sorts of different types of applications now, right? It's not just legacy Windows apps; it's SaaS applications. It's virtual apps. And, and then the third trend is they're using all sorts of different devices, right? And so as companies are really looking to attract and retain talent, you know, they want to uh, enable employees to be, to use the devices that they love to be productive how they want to be productive, right? And so many uh, employees that we see now use, you know, two or three different devices. They might use their Dell laptop, you know, to be really productive and crank out work, right? They might use their iPhone or their Android device um, as well on the applications that are available to them there. And so so we really see these three trends come in together and, um, as a way for organizations to change how their employees work, right? And Atos and VMware and Dell are coming together to help enable that for our customers. Yeah, so Justin, uh, you, you know, I, I, I don't know if it struck others, but for me, seeing Pat Gelsinger and Satya uh, Nadella up on stage together, uh, you know, what was impressive because, you know, VMware and Microsoft, you know, VMware, Dell and Microsoft have a long, long relationship. 
VMware and Microsoft, it's an interesting relationship there. You know, end user uh, is, is something that uh, you know, we actually uh, you know, have seen Sanjay and his team with end user computing growing out, but you know, I want you to comment on kind of the news of the week as well as kind of the importance of you know, bringing like Microsoft into this discussion. Abs absolutely, you know, I think you know, with all, you know, everything that you said, the you know, one thing I would say is that I think VMware complements Microsoft you know, very well. So when we look at the end user computing space, you know, for years now, um, you know, we've looked at uh, how can we, uh, with, you know, as, as Microsoft introduced Windows 10, how can we you know, bring that into the fold and extend a great experience on Windows 10? When you look at Office 365, and uh, I just did a session earlier, and the number of hands that went up that are deploying Office 365, uh, VMware you know, has a great story around you know, conditional access for those applications and uh, providing a great experience. And so I think you know, what we see now is this, um, you know, customers are making different investments. Some customers are making investments in Microsoft 365 and, and others are making them in Workspace ONE. And so now um, we can maximize those investments so they can get the most out of their endpoint um, you know, and their end user computing strategy. It's really a one plus one equals three uh, scenario. And then we have services from companies like Atos and Dell and others that are coming around to help drive transformation across any of the devices that employees are using, whether it is a Windows 10 PC um, or whether it is a mobile device and accessing Office and other applications on it. So it was, it was really powerful to see, I think, Satya, Pat, and Michael on stage this morning coming together. Uh, indeed, it was really, really impressive. I think just the fact that they were on stage were the most powerful message for, for end user computing, at least. So, Melanie, we we look at this importance of employee engagement, you mentioned Justin, you know, talent attraction and retention. What is Atos doing to actually, there's got to be another, maybe it's employee transformation, well it's workplace transformation really, right? But how are you kind of leading in that to really drive you know, business outcomes like a business being able to generate more revenue because hey, we're enabling our workforce in the way that they want to work. And as Justin said, with all the devices that they say, let me use what I'm familiar with. Yeah, so, so one thing for us which is really key is that, I mean, all this employee experience, it's a really nice story, but if we just talk about it, it remains a story and we can't really do anything about it. I heard many people say this morning, uh, it's about the data, and this is what we're doing. What, what we're really looking at now is how do we make this employee experience tangible. So it's all about moving toward the data-driven approach. So we are going to collect uh, all the data. So again, we have these people, places, and platforms. So we're going to collect the data from the devices. Uh, at ATOS, we manage uh, 4.5 million devices. So this is that much data metrics that we can collect to understand what's happening and what's going. Uh, it is the same with, um, with uh, the, the feedback of the end user, understanding how they work like on a collaboration solution, understanding how people are working with each other, how they can change, so that at the end, we are going to be able to give some insight. We're going to be able to give some insight to the employee, so that, again, he can understand what he can do differently. We're also going to give insight to the organization. It can be the IT department, it can be the HR department, it can be the facilities. Uh, it's all about uh, bringing all of that together so we give this holistic vision uh, and yeah, be able to drive the change, this is what we're targeting. Yeah, I, I love that. If you look at digital transformation, one of the most important things is I need to have my business being driven by data. I have to have those feedback loops. What, what I'm curious is, you know, what are some of those you know, key measurements? How are you, uh, you know, looking at these environments you know, kind of today when I have all this data versus maybe how I would have done things in the past? Yeah, so uh, indeed, and um, this is where today we are walking away from this standard level, uh, uh, service level agreements, you know, the way we use to measure the IT services. Uh, we, people talk a lot about this watermelon effect, you know, where it's all green outside, uh, but red in the inside. So all the KPI are green, meaning the server in the infrastructure is working, but at the end, the end user is not happy. So today we are, we are talking about experience level agreements, so it's about defining metrics which are, which are really going to show how does the service perform and what makes sense for the employee at the end. So more or less we're moving away from the infrastructure and we're getting closer to the business, taking measures that are really going to show, um, to, to, to show what, what is going to impact the business. 
I, you uh, know, and just to build on that, I think what's one of the interesting things that we see now is that you know IT teams aren't just measured on cost, right? They're being measured more and more on employee experience, right? We're seeing uh, companies do an employee net promoter scores now, right? How can we elevate the employee experience um, from the day they start at the company uh, to the day they retire, right? And so I think that's what you know Atos and others are really bringing together uh, for their customers and for our joint customers. And that's cultural impact at a business. Yep. Whether it's a business that's been around 35 years as long as Dell has or one that's maybe younger, that cultural change is hard. We talk about that at every event with every company because especially for veteran employees or more seasoned who are used to certain ways of doing business, that company has to transform culturally as well for their digital transformation to enable them to become the leaders that they want. So I'm hearing that one of the things that Actos is enabling is that cultural transformation to really, it's not just about having new KPIs and changing SLAs, it's driving change for entire business units to impact that whole company. Yeah, uh, and to be able to do that, so we still want to be data driven, so we're going to get this, this KPI, but this KPI, there is no one size fit all. There is not one KPI that we're going to apply to all our customers. It is a work that we're doing with a customer to understand what is key for them. Uh, and for me, what, what an example which is uh, a bit, I don't know if it's funny or interesting is, uh, we have this customer for whom we have this tech bars, you know, the walking uh, bar where an end user can go and get uh, coaching, support, help from, from a technician. And so we had this customer where the tech bar were very successful. So were, there were more and more people going there. And because there were more and more people, they started queuing. And we said, okay, there's an issue. We don't want people to be queuing. But uh, of course, so we went into a discussion with a customer and at the beginning, everybody, everybody's idea was, okay, let's put more people behind the desk so they can help. And when we had this discussion with a customer, it turned out it was not a good solution because it was a company with a very strong family culture, very centered about you know, the relationship on the network. And these tech bars, they were meant to be a place where people can go and, and chat with each other and uh, share about what's going on. So instead of putting more people behind the desk, we put, uh, we talk about adding coffee and cookies at the day so people are willing to go. And I mean, this is, this is just an example, but it's just to say what it's measuring, it's not about measuring how long someone is going to wait at a desk, it's about understanding what is important for this customer, and then we can define with them uh, the, the key metrics that we need to follow. That's excellent, and a, and a tech bar, that's a bar I can get behind. <laughs> Melanie, Justin, thank you so much for joining Stu and me on theCUBE this afternoon. We appreciate your time, and it's always exciting to hear how the employee experience is so pivotal and critical Absolutely. to digital transformation. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you very much. Oh, our pleasure. Thanks. For Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching us live in Las Vegas, day one of theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technology World's 2019. Thanks for watching.